coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. On this episode, Nashville entrepreneur and master drum technician, Harry McCarthy. And now, Rich Redman. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Rich Redman here. I'm your host of The Rich Redman Show, and I am so thrilled to have one of the greatest drummers, drum techs in the world, my friend Harry McCarthy. Great last name. Welcome to the show. That's we, quite an introduction. Hey, we <laughs> make it easy. We are, we're motivators around here. This is so awesome to have you here at Crash Studios in my humble abode here, the house that drums built. Um, and uh, Jim, my, yes. as always, my trusty sidekick, co-producer, man about sidekick. town, CEO, chief bottle washer of Big Dot Lighting, which is a sponsor of our show, Big yeah. BigDotLighting.com, and Jim McCarthy VoiceOvers.com. Listen yes, to sir. this voice. I don't know what he's talking about. In a world. In a world. <laughs> One so, man. so uh, guys, thank you so much for all the shares, all the likes, all the comments, all the rating, all the reviewing. We really appreciate that. That helps us list higher. When people are looking for podcasts, they're going to be able to see this show. And we're talking about all things music, motivation, and success. We're talking to drummers. We're talking to musicians, authors, comedians, and thought leaders. So if you have a suggestion for a guest, or you just want to just give us some props or give us some feedback about how we can improve we got an email address it's the rich redmond show at gmail.com all right so let's jump into this so so harry you have worked you're a drummer you're from new york what borough westchester harrison westchester i'm familiar with that you are yeah grew up in danbury connecticut yeah we're both canetians i grew up uh on the poor side of town (laughs) near the railroad tracks Mm. was that croton no. No. Harrison, New York. And your Why uncle, Harrison? Your uncle was a drummer. My uncle was a drummer. Uh, Eddie Julian. Um, pretty. He was a big shot back in the day. Indoor Slingerland drums. I, in my office, I have a couple of ads. Ads. I got to see that. From back then, it's pretty rare. Um, some people know it, but there's quite a few that don't. I grew up in Harrison, mm-hmm. four houses away from Rick and Jerry Murata. Mm. You just so, had Rick in, right? At the Yeah, so I just had Rick at the drum pad. He did a master class and we've been friends for forty plus years. But that those guys were a, a huge influence. Yeah. Um, and for the listeners that aren't musicians, Rick and Jerry Murata are oof. these they're, they're these wonderkins, uh, drummers. And um, Rick did so many things like playing with Steely Dan, massive session drummer. Um, he may have played, did he play on You're So Vain or was that? I think that was maybe Russ, Russ Kunkel. Kunkel. But I think he played live with. He played with Carly yeah. quite a bit and I actually toured as his drum tech. But you know the way, how I really celebrate his victory because he wrote the theme song to Everybody Loves Raymond. Cha-ching! Cha-ching! <laughs> hey, let's say a shout out to Rick on The Vineyard. That's awesome. <laughs> it's- yeah, Rick's awesome. And so is Jerry. Jerry played with Peter Gabriel, Hall & Oates, yeah. Orleans, still the one. Mm-hmm. But um, from when I was a young kid, I loved... I didn't have drums. I played on boxes, probably like some of your yeah. listeners. And my uncle sent me drumsticks. So that got me off and running. Well, you get the sticks, and you got some some people to look up to. You have the bug. You have the passion. What oh. did you aspire to? What did you want to be? Um, I wanted to play drums mm-hmm. of like so many guys. And I had a good run playing in local bands. And when I got out to LA, I, I was in a band, and you know we had... A little bit of success. Mm. When was the move to LA? How old were you? Okay, let's get cut right to the chase. That's, <laughs> that's what I love about Rich. Um, girlfriend broke up with me, heartbroken. We all have those oh, stories. Yeah. I was hanging out with Rick, and Rick goes, Hey, I'm going out to LA for work. Um, why don't you drive one of my cars out there and, and hang out and, you know, check it out? I like that. Drive one of my cars. And it was a DeLorean. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Before the movie came out, Back to the Future. So I got pulled over quite a bit from police. Just to check out the car. Just to check out the car, seriously. Wow. Drove his car out and 
failure was not an option for me to survive. Right. So I got a job at a cartage company called Leeds Instrument Rentals. Oh. They were the Gucci cartage company. There was SIR, but um, their clients were Carlos Vega, Jeff Picaro, Steve Lukather, Steve Picaro, David Page. Uh, Andy Leeds went to high school with the Toto guys, and he didn't play an instrument. So those guys, they were doing sessions when they were still in high school. Yeah. Sonny and Cher show sure. when they were in high school. Said, hey, Andy, why don't you get a van and move our equipment around? That's how he started his business. So I got a job there, $10 an hour. Happy to have a job. Hey, that was good. That was actually really good. Yeah. Hey, back then, 1982. Yeah. yeah. That's great money. It is good money. But you guys, all of a sudden, I knew who Carlos Vega was. I knew who Jeff Picaro was. I saw their names on records. Mm -hmm. I went from New York, and now I'm setting up their drums. You know, became friends with them and um, gravitated. They didn't just do drums. They did guitar players, engineers, and mm -hmm. keyboard players. But I gravitated to the drum department, mm -hmm. and Harvey Mason was one of their clients. Certain mm -hmm. guys would ask me, or ask them, "Hey, I'm, you know, I have a session. Can Harry set me up? He knows my stuff really well." Yeah. So, a um, couple of years there, decided to break out and do it on my own. And that was with? Did you have a partner, Jeff? Right? Um, I started my own business, and then about six months later, Jeff Chonis, who works with Ringo, yep. Um, he's still doing that, right? He's still doing it. He was just here in town. Amazing. Um, hope he's in Ringo's will. <laughs> <laughs> I think he hopes so too. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, Jeff and I had a good run. He was working for Kenny Aronoff. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that guy? Yeah, he and gets um, around. Myron Grumbacher. I'd love Myron. Yeah, Myron was a badass. Jeff worked with Benatar. So anyway, we teamed up. We pulled our resources, our equipment. And our clients, I had Luis Conti, who was doing a gazillion sessions. And by the way, guys, back in the, now we're fast forward into maybe the late 80s, studios, seven days a week, mm -hmm. Christmas oh. Eve, recording oh. records. Yeah. Right. Non stop sessions well you hit that was lightning in a bottle you hit the, it was lightning the in a bottle best period of the music business the velvet rope cocaine days phenomenal crazy run mm -hmm. and um my concept jim back to your question of what geared me to going into business i thought of a personalized service and just doing drums mm -hmm. not guitar players not in you know not you wanted a niche. I just wanted yeah. to do drummers, move their stuff, change their drum heads, basic repairs, and really, you guys, set it up so if you guys are going to come in, you know, it's, it's, it's you sit in down the ballpark. And go. You sit down and go. Yeah. It is a beautiful experience, you know, and, and to just a backstory for those folks that aren't musicians out there. Us drummers, we're usually the first guys there, the last ones to leave. We have the most gear, and it's stressful, man. The guitar player walks in with a guitar on his back, maybe. He plugs in, but we've got stuff. Yeah. And if you're running around from gig to gig or session to session, you're a live musician, you're a recording musician, You, we have these wonderful people called drum techs and they're responsible for maintaining the drum set cleaning the drum set changing the heads making them sound good and it's such a specialized service and you're you you yeah. excel at this and uh, you said i want to do this just for drummers yeah and it really took off and then <clears throat> some of the guys that i was working for in town asked me to go out on the road with them yeah and that was another whole revenue stream yeah it was phenomenal like I ended up going out with Toto mm. and sitting behind Jeff and and getting to work with him one on one. I it taught you know a hero, Jeff mm -hmm. Picaro, yeah, a one hero. of the most recorded drummers in history, whose life was cut a little short at thirty eight. Thirty eight years old, so young. Oh my gosh, it was I remember that brutal. But um, so what I've been able to accomplish, and I'm still doing it. Mm. It's been a little tricky, but. I don't want to jinx myself here, but I've been able to go on the road yeah. and have that revenue stream. And I've also been able to maintain my business in Nashville now for mm -hmm. 25 years I just hit. Congratulations. 25 years yeah. as a business owner 
in Music City, USA. Yeah, and by the way, f- moving here and going from LA to Nashville and starting my business here, it was brutal. Really? It was so, so difficult. I remember John Good, Drum Workshop. Mm-hmm. We love John. We love um, John. John said to me, um, Fear is a great motivator. Sure. I never <laughs> forgot that because I bought a house in Nashville Ain't before. That's the truth, man. Yeah. Yeah. I had a house, you know, nothing extravagant, but coming from LA, I had a little house there, sold it. But I bought a house. My father in law said, Buy the house. You can always sell it. I had no job. A little bit of money, and Jeff Jonas, we made a deal for not a lot of money, but I had a couple of years of monthly income from drum paradise la LA. Mm-hmm. but i could not get my business started in nashville well there, there was, was other it, carter's companies there, there was, was quite, express and there sir was, and there was quite a few ss ssu i was yes, there yeah yeah i've been with everyone <laughs> <laughs> my first carter person was god bless him casey lutton casey thank you buddy casey's still out there yeah in the van. He had the white van down by the river, and he works hard. Works hard. Yeah. But so he was kind of a one-off guy. He's just a guy with a van and a smile on his face. Wow. Yeah. No no big overhead. Right. No insurance. Right. No warehouse. And a hard worker. Right. And, and we, we work together. Now. So, Harry, just to give everybody, like, quickly, because I didn't do this, just a point of reference. The people that you've worked for, Bruce Springsteen, the Eagles, Eric Clapton, Neil Young, Mark Knopfler, Carly Simon, Hall Oates, Michael McDonald, Madonna Toto, James Taylor, and you're out with, and of course, many, many more in between. Yeah. And then the greatest drummers in the world. So we're talking Ringo. We're talking John Robinson, who played with Michael Jackson. We're talking um, Dave Weckl. These guys are all household names if you are not a musician. So the who's who of the music industry. And then you come to Nashville, and now your clients, you've got a big overhead. You've got the warehouse. It's climate controlled. You've got a yeah. manager. You've got your beautiful yeah. wife runs the books while Rich. you're on the road with Keith Urban. What I love about Rich, he knows how to score points. Hey. My wife, if you're listening, she said to say hello. Hello. And you and your but daughter just got married, right? My daughter just uh, got married and congrats. we're still buzzing from it. She That's got great. married a couple of weeks congratulations. ago. Congratulations. Thank you. I saw it, the first dance. Yeah. <laughs> in my <laughs> life. I, I how, old, how old is she? 28. 20, that's, a good age. that's a nice respectable yeah. age for marriage yeah. like back in the day it was like everyone was married at 22 you know what you guys I really felt not only really proud but a sense of accomplishment I was about to say yeah that's that's a nice rounded out upbringing and we blew it out yeah we spent a few was bucks was it a big Italian wedding yes did you have Italian cookies <laughs> Fredo the- we couldn't find Fredo but <laughs> oh my God. are you Italian there were, there were people kissing the ring Wait, yes I, McCarthy I, well you'd never know that but I know my mom know. was Giuliano Right. Yeah, my mom was Paradiso, and then Redmond is Irish Welsh. Yeah, and see, my wife's really Italian. Yeah, she's see. I mean, we we share the same last name. Yeah, you know. And I had heard that I might be a McCarthy, like Scottish with an descent. A. Yeah, mm-hmm. because when our and that might be the the same thing for you, because apparently. When they came over on on the boat and went to Ellis Island, the people at Ellis, they were processing so many people that they just you know, an A became a C. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, you could do the twenty three and Me or the. Um, I, I got to do something. The I, DNA I, test. Yeah. I'm scared because I don't want to find out that like I'm not as Italian as I think I am. <laughs> 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 because that's a strong gene. I don't know. I mean, you identify with that. You you are you you are pretty strongly Italian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, full on. So it was great. You had a good time. <clears throat> the wedding was phenomenal. New York. Um, it was here in Nashville. Oh, you did here. Yes. Right. Right. At the Skimmerhorn. Oh yeah. Symphony oh really? Nice. Yeah. 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 We have a nice symphony here, folks. Guys. Oh, what a beautiful venue. If, if you think Nashville is hay bales and horses tied up to the side of saloons, oh, no, it's we're it, the it city, man. Yeah. It was when I moved here. It sure was yeah. when I moved here. I saw a picture today of Demon Bruin Street, Demon Bruin, Demon Bruin Street, and it it was like just souvenir shops, like tacky. Like, what is this? Demos was the big restaurant. Demos yeah. was down the, in yeah. the. In downtown and it was dangerous but still there those days are long gone yeah see i came here from las vegas in 05 and everyone's like oh it's nash vegas and i go no, no it's not it's nothing like vegas at all now it's it, it's and now it is bedlam but, down there on on broadway on a monday bed, night it's bedlam everywhere i mean just but on a monday night it's like japanese tourists puking you know because they're partying their faces <laughs> and bachelorette off. parties and bachelor parties woo, on, the, on the pedal taverns like nuts yeah 
Yeah. So this is interesting to me because I like talking to other business owners. I'm a business owner myself. We're in the process of growing big dot lighting and electrical Mm -hmm. and scaling it up. Okay. And it's scary at times. Sure. It really is. You know, and and we just went through a very tight summer with with, uh, people not, you know, we've got a lot of stuff in the pipeline and just all of a sudden that cash flow dries up and it's, you know, you know, some of the things that you've experienced, you you talk about in LA, it just kind of popped. And you niched yourself and differentiated the business like you were talking about. Yeah. But out here, it was a much tougher game. Well, Why is that? here's the deal. Um, at the time, I was working for Michael McDonald's drummer, and Michael had just moved to Nashville. Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. sure if he still lives here. I think he lives in Hawaii. but I would, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he deserves it. Sure. Um, he kept telling me about Music City. Well, he kept saying, hey, Harry, you should check out Nashville. I kept hearing about Music City. So I was gravitated. Something pulled me here. Mm -hmm. I kept hearing, hey, and I definitely wanted to get out of Los Angeles. My daughter was three or four years old at the time. Mm -hmm. What borough did you live in out there? I lived in Woodland Hills. Nice. In the valley. Did you have boroughs out there? I had a great little house, and I was in the last pretty substantial earthquake mm. in 94 94 mm. I remember that one was that the northridge yes okay. mm. and i was thinking of moving prior to that and uh when that earthquake came that was the last straw for me yeah it was pretty nuts i just experienced scary. my first two earthquakes we had them back to back about a month ago and they were yeah the waves ah, i was a little scared yeah, get I under mean, the door arch. Get under the door arch. There's you know tornadoes here, and you know you're not safe anywhere. But that particular <laughs> earthquake, houses on my street slid off the, their foundation, and there was a gas leak, and it was crazy. And my house, the aftershocks, my little house in the valley, was creaking and bending like wow. straw, mm-hmm. with my daughter and my wife in my arms in wow. a doorway at four thirty in the morning. But wow. anyway. You're like, I'm out of here. Well, yeah, I I had been really thinking about it, but that kind of, you know, gave me more incentive to get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. Getting to your question about coming here, the business, I did catch the last wave. Like, we're in 94, there were a lot of records and big budgets, Mm -hmm. studios were cranking. Um, Getting started, though, the business was very viable but an outsider coming in and i'm not that guy hey by the way i worked with jeff and steve gad and it's like people don't care about that Mm -hmm. and i never use that to try and get me business i mean it's a nice little icebreaker if someone asks but it's funny that's credibility what i love what i still like about nashville there is a sense of loyalty Mm mm-hmm what a great community yeah when people work together and i was up against Getting start, I couldn't get started. It was a catch twenty two. No, I didn't have that where climate control warehouse that that I have now. I sub rented a little space from a uh, a sound company, Sound Image. Yeah, okay. Had no truck, had no client, had a little space. Long story. Chad Cromwell. He's your first client. First client. That's great. Yeah, and I'll always be indebted to that because Chad gave me a start. Awesome. Going. So, what do you do? Like, you're gonna set up the. You, do you do cartage? What else do you do? I'll change your heads. I'll get drum sounds for you. And yeah. I know it's different when the drummer comes in and plays. That's a but great it's, start for the engineer. It's a good start for the engineer. And you know, if you're a drummer and you got a family and you want to take your kid to school and you don't want to be at the studio just banging drums, so that was one of my uh, things. Services. I, yeah. I, yes. Benefits. Beautiful. Once I got Chad. Bingo. There was like, there's this guy in town that's, he sets up the drums. That's all and, it takes. And you know what's funny, yeah. you guys? Awesome. And I'm not taking credit for it, but I would call the studio and see if I could get the drums in the night before here mm-hmm. in Nashville. Sure. Mm-hmm. Nobody was, they didn't do that. Ah. Uh. L.A., it's like yeah. they want the drums two days ahead, well in the budget. So they can adjust to the climate. Yeah, and, and, and back in L.A., back in those days, the budget was like, let's see what the drums sound like on this side of the room. Like, would bring them in like four days early. Sure. Oh, cut, let's move them over here. Like, 
it didn't matter. But anyway, yeah, that's, a lot of, like, that's a lot of extra work for you. Like I remember hearing stories about the uh, August and Everything record, the Counting Crows. Yeah. It's like they set up drums poolside at the studio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. You yeah. guys, it was so extravagant. Experimental. You know, experimental. Mm -hmm. Kitchen and, sinks and toilets. You know, yeah. the labels, <laughs> you know, I think they shot themselves in the foot to some degree. Because they were spending so lavishly? Yeah. It was out of control across the board. Yeah. But anyway. Um, but I, gotta, I mean, you set that up in, in, in LA, and now that's really, that that engine has been started, and it's helping you fund what you're doing in Nashville. Yeah, and, and by the way, my days in LA, it was like going to college. I didn't go to college. Uh, right. I always wonder what, I'd end, what I would have ha ended up being or doing if I went to school because yeah. when I took my daughter that. to college I was like wow look at this what did she say? she went to Ole Miss oh yeah mm -hmm. and it's a real beautiful college campus and that was a few years back but I felt like that I missed out yeah yeah, yeah to some degree and and I mm -hmm. I talked to different people about that and they say nah th you know you did fine <laughs> like, yeah, you, no you did you wonderful. did great yeah but I always felt like I got chipped I guess mm -hmm. I could have went into debt well and, I mean and yeah. had student loans what are you gonna go study the marimba and timpani and all that kind no. of stuff I mean you went and did it became hung out with rock stars you're a rock yeah. star what you yeah. do but here's the thing you guys and Rich can relate to this um if you have a passion for something like I love, like I'm in your studio now, just surrounded by drums, <laughs> mm -hmm. and it's just a calm feeling for me. I love. I don't have to even hear them. Yeah. Like I just love looking at drums. So my point is, is I found something that I could relate to. I mean, I think a monkey can set up drums. You well, can I mean, train a monkey, yeah. but yeah, but getting them to sound beautiful mm -hmm. is the art. Form. Getting them to sound mm -hmm. good and you guys know this there's a lot of other things that go along with it you know computers and racks and oh, providing yeah. a click track and yeah. you know there's lots of different things that plus the personality of the drummer and the culture of the person mm -hmm. you work for yeah you nailed it somebody where you can give them what they need and not be in their face give them some space but also to get along with other people mm -hmm. on a big tour and feel like you're part of it. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. a sense of, wow, this is great. So you're out now with Keith Urban. You've been there for a while with Seth Roush. I've been with Keith Urban seven years. Uh, I work with Seth Roush, who's flying by. a sweetheart. It's flying by. Prior to that, I was with Max Weinberg with Bruce Springsteen for mm -hmm. 12 and a half years. Wonderful. Wonderful. All over the world. It's incredible. Like, wore my ass out yeah and i missed a lot of my daughter growing up like i'd go on tour for like 12 weeks like i'd leave 10 to 12 weeks that's well, a lot of facetime kisses to the bride didn't have it back then oh that's right yeah. i'm an old guy no the flip the flip phone flip the phone t9 texting yeah where are you at it might have been the beeper. Well, <laughs> our production, I had a pager. Our production yeah. manager, he called. they called it the hammer phone. <laughs> After the gig was over, they'd be like, go ahead, call home. That's awesome. You know, from, so, the, so from the office. My, my, I'm intrigued because you were running a business mm -hmm. here in Nashville, but you were also out on the road doing your thing. S still doing it. Right. and John Michael. So how do you scale that up? I mean, you got to have people you trust and You got to have one guy that you can trust <clears throat> and... Occasionally, he will drop the ball. Is he listening? <laughs> oh, I, oh, I didn't mean John Michael. Okay. I, meant, that, I, meant the, I meant the new guy. Um, it's really tough sometimes. Yeah. But you surround yourself with good people. Yeah. And by the way, and my clients know this, or friends and clients, I'm a phone call away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I don't call you back or text you back, I'm on an airplane or the show's going on. Other than that, I will take your call and go, what's up? Is there a problem? No. Yeah. I really try hard. And in any business, you guys, you know there's good days and bad days and yeah. things don't go. I, I aim to please. I get really upset if somebody doesn't get what they're looking for and not happy. Mm. I take it personally. And you have people that work for you that don't care it's not their business it's not their business right 
they just want to come in, get paid. I mean, I've had employees come in to work and go, do you know what time I'm going to be done? <laughs> <laughs> they haven't done anything. Well, you've, right. you've had a, you know. I've had a lot. You, but you've had guys come through and a lot of them are like guys that maybe want to play. Most of them want to play, right. right. So, you know, what's really interesting. It reminds me of when I moved to town, my first week in town, I opened up the Yellow Pages and I joined the union and I was cold calling people and I sent you a resume a real and you did you i think you maybe i don't know what was going on in your but you didn't hire me because i needed money and so my thought process was like well maybe he thinks i'm a really good player and i should go do that and so he was doing me a favor well that is (laughs) no seriously that's the truth there are so many guys that want to play and i don't want to ever hold anybody back Mm -hmm. from really going after their dream. But in the reality sense and being practical, they got to make a living. They got to you know find a way to, and it, right. this is kind of, in con- it's congruent in what they're doing. It gets them in the community. But there's also that notion that you had talked about, Rich. Don't let people see you loading equipment. Oh, Tommy Wells, God rest his soul. Tommy Wells says, don't let them see you do that. I said, Bingo. really? No. But at the same time, I have... Through through your service and other services, I have seen guys that have wanted to play that have set up drums, and they met a ton of great people, and then got a gig out of it. It's a really good point because there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah, like once you're perceived as a cartage guy, and, that's it, and that means if you've done it for a couple of, a year or two, mm-hmm. a couple of years. It's. I think it's even more difficult. It to, takes an exceptional character and personality to absolutely. break that mold. Case in point, Greg Glazer. And I don't know if I told you this story. At, when I first, at GC Pro? At GC Pro. When yeah. I first met him, I was selling cars. And I knew everybody at GC, at Guitar Center, uh, You know, typically were there just basically phoning it in until they find their gig. And it was something to do within their industry that they could make a living, right? Sure. So on a Saturday afternoon, which is typically like heyday for for car salespeople, it's a good time. You got to be there every Saturday. Uh, Greg comes walking up and he, uh, you know, we start doing the rapport thing. He tells me what he's looking for. You know, I'm selling Highline vehicles. And, you know, I said, well, where do you work? And he goes, Guitar Center. And in my mind, I'm going, you got to be freaking kidding me. I'm on you're, a saying, wait, you're not going to be able to afford this car? Or? Right. Oh, you gotcha. know, and that's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's the initial curb qualification thing that's going on in my mind. And he saw the look on my face and he goes, don't worry about it. <laughs> I right. can see Greg. I know, right? Yeah. So this is, and you know, ever since we started that conversation, he was the guy who broke the mold for me. He's like, I head up GC Pro. I'm, he was a natural born salesperson. I don't even think he really plays an instrument. Interesting. I never asked yeah. him about that. But I mean, it's it's kind of a, like yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, the guys that work for me now, um, my night guys, they play drums. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I mean, Jim Handley always had Jim a gig. Handley is he's been at it a long time. Great guy, great drummer, and great he, gig, great yeah. gig. And yeah. I'll take him whenever we can get him. Mm-hmm. Right? You know what I mean? If he could jump in part time, awesome. Yeah. It's like so, my mom. She was such a great nurse. She worked past really when she wanted to in two cities she would go between florida and new mexico and they're like oh patty's in town we'll take her because she was so such a great nurse yeah and, and it's funny because jim hanley for those of you who don't know uh backs the uh one of the probably the nation's best journey tribute bands yes resurrection well he got to learn the material by teching for well, dean, dean castro right? right. and i think he's got one of dean's kits yeah, yeah. He, uh, plays what's up yeah. jim Yo, Jim, yeah. can you be in at four o'clock? Just <laughs> <Yeah>. kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Well, I mean, just the other morning, I had a session at Warner Brothers, and John Michael, you know, who's yeah. your, what's his title? Ma- uh, Operations manager. He's it. he's my go-to guy. He's been with me 15 years. He's on vacation right now. He is on vacation. He was just like tweaking my toms and getting starting to get some things rolling, and then I walked in, and he goes, you want it? I was like, all right, I'm in. But it's just, it's so helpful to have at least the drums in the room and then you guys take it a step further where everything is cleaned, it's set up exactly, it's sounding great. So the drummer just is literally, now we're in creative mode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice for you to show up and mingle with the other musicians. Yeah, grab how's, your the, coffee. how's the hey. wife and kid? Hey, how's the boat? <laughs> it wasn't always that way for you, right? I, oh, the so, first couple years were tough, yeah. I've yeah. been uh, fortunate and very blessed yeah. to have the run of, I've had. What was oh, and the time, it's still going strong. Yeah, what was a time in your business where it was just, you know, like 
oh my god you know where maybe it seemed like the wheels were coming off i mean was there really was somebody some hmm. some, some of the struggles you had well the struggles are having good help when you're super busy and then not having enough work mm -hmm. if you want to keep your guys busy so you don't lose them mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. um i've been nothing really catastrophic you know or or major right well i always think about some of the overhead like the overheads i you know and guys there's other people that have done it and you can run a cartridge company out of a storage locker public storage <laughs> locker or your garage my place i'm proud of it yeah the reason why you call it drum paradise yeah it, i'm a neat freak I'm, I'm pretty anal about stuff and yeah. i there's a lot of responsibility in looking after 30 clients equipment so everybody's got a spot so if they come in and want to work on their stuff or get pick something up or drop something off everybody kind of knows their area mm -hmm. and uh yeah I mean, I mean that's heavy. I mean, your clients are guys like for the drummers out there: Near Z, Nick Buddha, Eddie Bears, Lonnie Wilson, Greg Morrow, Miles McPherson, Jerry Rowe, Chris McHugh, and many others. Many others. Who was yeah. so Chad was first? Who Chad came was, second? Uh, Lonnie Wilson. Yeah. Wow, that's a big one. And that was a big one. And we're talking ninety four, ninety five. Well, ninety five, and um, he they were all working a lot. Lonnie has played on one hundred and fifty. Number one, number one songs. Yeah, crazy. It's great. I thought I was cool, but he's nope. he, he's mostly a studio guy, right? Oh, and then he was doing some yeah. Vegas stuff with Reba recently, right. and Actually then done. I think George Strait. Oh, he's he's with he's George, George Strait. Strait. Yeah, mm -hmm. but also, I mean, and I don't want to leave anybody out. And my intention isn't to name everybody I work with, but Shannon Forrest. Oh yes, Shannon Forrest. And the reason I always, the, you know. The reason why I forget Shannon sometimes is because I never, I wish I wrote his name down, um, I never see him out at drum events or yeah. mingling. Well, you know, you know. he's private, he's a pretty private guy, but he also has his beautiful studio yeah. at, at his residence, and he does qu quite a bit of other work, not just drumming. He's yeah. a producer, producer, engineer, he's done some Michael McDonald records. I wish I was private. He's... <laughs> You're not private. You'll <laughs> never be that private. That sounds like Rich a lot easier. Yeah. Rich, you'll never be <laughs> private. That, that's what it strikes me about you is that you grew your business. Did you have like this big, ornate uh, vision for the business? And, I, you know, as you get to now, like present day? I honestly didn't. Um, just took it day by day. You know what, you guys? I was All I wanted to do was fit in and... and <laughs> move equipment right right and when i moved to nashville you guys it was really the most difficult period of my life my wife was complaining that there's no blooming bloomingdales and starbucks right and i'm trying to start a business yeah coming from la i worked with so many great people and when i got here it was like a little bit of a culture shock i was on my own yeah mm -hmm. and um I'll tell you a funny story. I've told it a few times, but I'll never forget it. When I got Lonnie Wilson, Chad and Lonnie as a client, I had bought a used rider truck, mm -hmm. yellow. Yeah, so it could be seen. <laughs> well, yes. I didn't. <laughs> Wait, you'll love this. This is crazy. Um, I got this truck for like 10 or 12 grand, and I started moving equipment around Nashville a little bit at a time. Well, the Oklahoma City bombing happened. Oh, yeah. So, I pulled up to a studio, Sound Shop. There's condos there now. I can't believe that. I missed that place. But it had a big glass front window, and I went to pick up Lonnie's drums. And the session had just ended, and all, a lot of the musicians were in the front lounge. And there was a couple of guys in overalls. You know, yeah. nothing against anybody with yeah. overalls. Gosh, gosh, by gosh. A little different from L.A. Yeah. And <clears throat> I'm schlepping gear down the hall into this yellow rider truck. And it's 105 degrees out. <laughs> I'm dripping wet. And I come back into the studio and I hear one of the musicians. Maybe he was the fiddle player or something. Or the do banjo player. Dobro or the broom. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> is there any dynamite in that truck? Mm -hmm. And I went what like oklahoma city bombing happened so i had to get my truck painted the next day 
Yeah. Because people were going, what the hell? There's a rider truck parked in front of our studio that's not moving. Mm. Got through that. A few sessions later, if not maybe a, a few weeks later, a month later, I my logo has a palm tree mm-hmm. with like a conga drum on like a little island. Yeah. It's paradise. Moving. I don't know if it was Lonnie. I'm moving some Chad's drums. Drum paradise in Nashville. Goddamn palm trees. <laughs> like, really? Can't I catch a break here, you guys? I'm just a <clears throat> hardworking guy. Just right. want to take care of my family. And I, I'm moving the drums out. I said, hey, <clears throat> excuse me. You see that truck out there? Get used to it. You're going to see it a lot. Nice. Nice. Cool statement. It was just like, guys back off uh, like yeah. i guess it did kind of if you put two and two together uh, somebody driving a truck that has a palm tree on it in nashville doesn't really belong here <laughs> i really really wish there was palm trees here but I, they would just die in the winter anyway you guys <laughs> but so, you're, you're memorable you branded yourself yeah 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 and uh, i love the logo i love it and guys fast forward to nowadays i can't believe that i still I'm in business in this day and age <laughs> with the music industry, and here's why. Mm-hmm. House drum kits, yeah. studios, and it's all about saving money. We don't want to pay cartage. Technology, loops, people making records at home and in their home studios, and I'm really fortunate. And through the years, I don't just do drums now because other musicians in town here in Nashville some cartridge companies have closed up and other musicians said, hey, would you move my stuff? Well, Paul Franklin. Michael Rhodes. Mm-hmm. Michael Rhodes. Danny Rader. Danny Rader. You know, some engineers. So I'm thinking, if I got two trucks, it doesn't, like, keep them moving. Yeah. yeah. Work, work is work. Yeah. Totally. Well, I mean, where does the model go from here? I mean, are you doing a lot more live events? and Don't do around? a lot of live events. The model, um, I had a space above Drum Paradise and instead of leasing it out, I've decided to start a small little teaching facility. John Hall, who mm. works with Rich, who's the best guy ever. Seven years with me together. He's incredible. Like a son. Hey, John. Hallway Studios. Um, he's like a son. He is. He really is. I never had a son, so. He- but I've t- I've taken John under my wing at the drum pad. Yeah. To help me you know, keep it moving along. And what we're doing there is we have a practice room where you could sign up and play drums anytime. You get a code. Mm -hmm. There's two drum kits up there. You walk in with your stick bag. And I've done some master classes. Rich has done one. Chris McHugh. We just had Rick Murata. Sukerman, Dave Elich. Sukerman and Elich. And it's a wonderful space. It's a great space. And there are other guys in the pipeline. But Getting their schedule to work with, yeah, um, it's a little tricky. I, Steve Gad mm-hmm. really wants to do come in for a weekend and do a, a bunch of classes there, but his schedule. I'll be there. How big's the room? Um, I it's, don't, like, it's like this. Is it maybe a little bigger, a little longer? Yeah, it's but a, I love the drum sets there because I I'll go I go in there and teach. And I like it because I can meet someone. A lot of my teaching is meeting someone for the first time, and I may never see them again. So instead of having them in, in my house, yes, I can have them in a commercial facility. So if there's any teachers out there in Nashville that want to do this, it's we can do it at drum pad at the drum yeah, pad. Yeah, and um, it's an intimate setting where there's it. We can see 25 students right. at a time, but I like to keep it at 20. Right. And obviously, you guys, uh, I don't think I'm going to run out of drummers that want to do a class there. Absolutely. There's a, a list is the, a mile long. So I'm, I'm working on that. Right. Drum Paradise is kind of running itself, and I'm still working with Keith Urban, and I'm trying to figure out when I'm going to pull the plug. Have you ever had any offers? On the road. Uh, people mm. want to buy your business at all over, over the years or um, offers to sell it? I've had some interest. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Well, I've had some interest. It's a little tricky because it's personal right. service. It's somebody that has to be able to maintain the service. The quality. Um, But um, I'm not ready for that right yet, but that day will come. Right. I, I would like to sell my business. Hey, anybody out there? Yeah. Just- well, that's I know a good drumbiz at AOL.com. Yeah, if business you're attorney who uh, Do you? specializes in selling 
businesses well, and positioning I'd, them for I'd like to speak <clears throat> with him at okay. the point. My wife works there, like Rich mentioned early earlier, and she doesn't want to sell right now. Yeah. But you know what, you guys, I'm struggling. It's been such a big part of who I am. Right. My, you know that thing about your work is your identity, and I know I'm 61. I know that I don't have to do anything. I, there's plenty of guys that are still working on the road. I, I'm in better shape than half of them, but I know I need to like stop doing it because every day that I'm away on a tour bus, at the gig, at the airport, I'm missing out on being home right with my wife who's my daughter's grown up and how, how many years have you guys been married 31 it's great mm-hmm. super independent but not to get all heavy and everything i'm just trying to That's figure right. out the transition mm-hmm. you know i have rick morata you're gonna die in your bunk you know, he, you're gonna die on the road you love the road i mean there's a part of me that does the international travel you did you know, when I wore my ass out, but I think about, you know, you know, that you have to embrace, you know, the cultural differences. And this is a big one, especially for two Italians walking into a room, the food in foreign countries. Yeah, that was tough. I got a, such a sensitive stomach. When I go to Mexico city, my hosts are always like, hey, you're going to eat. And I was like, I can't afford. You flew me in here. I got to do a speech in front of two thousand people. I can't have Montezuma on stage. <laughs> so I live on. I didn't know you had a bad stomach. I, well, it's just sensitive. Sensitive. Yeah. yeah. Sensitive. Yeah. So I mean, there's going to be some countries that is just going to be like, ooh, I'm going to have to have protein bars and nuts in my suitcase, and I do it. You guys, <clears throat> being in Europe for ten, twelve weeks and all over the place. The food thing was a problem. Now, mm. yes, if we had a day off in Italy, that's great. You, Greece, you can't. You, yeah, you. There's. You can't find bad food. It's oh just my god! Every I, I could only imagine. Amazing. Have you been to Italy? I've been to um, Napoli mm. and um, Napoli, Pisa, but I still haven't been to Rome. That would be something. Be yeah, fun. you would enjoy. Rome, I would. That's actually. on my bucket list. Like you know, Italy, Spain, Portugal yeah. is amazing, real. Yeah. incredible. I have no desire to go to England or Ireland. Oddly enough. I think our people are from Napoli. You know, <clears throat> I knew I had been to Europe too many times when I was in France and my uh, co-workers were like, hey, we're going sightseeing. We're going to the Eiffel Tower. Like, I went, I've seen it 12 times. You know what? I'm just going to stay in my room and <laughs> try and find <laughs> there, CNN. <laughs> <laughs> so the interesting question, you, you, you're, what's next? What's the next chapter for Harry McCarthy? Do you have what? hobbies? Do we yeah. have hobbies as drummers? Uh, yeah. We? Golf? Well, for, you're I, golf. I'm not very good. I play. I enjoy it, but not good enough to retire and play golf every day. Yeah. Like some people I know. But would you want to? Have you put yourself mentally no. in that in that situation? If I was a good golfer, yes. Yeah. If I could play really good, then mm. I'd be that guy out there all the time. Because really? you really enjoy it. My dad, you... two hole-in-ones. Really? He's a... good. That's awesome. Prodigy. Yeah, that's great. Every day. <laughs> I have a motorcycle I ride. Nice. Mm-hmm. You like cars. We were, we were I love cars. cars. Love. Yeah. And my daughter just got married, so a used Ferrari's not going to happen. And I would never buy a Ferrari. In. Yeah. That's you lease those. Not practical. Or rent them. Yeah. Yeah. I, Jim, go, Jim I look can, at Aston Martin's gym. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jim convinced me to, to lease my first nice car, nice car I ever had in my life, and I really enjoyed the heck out of it. You and, came to me. Well, I, maybe I did convince no, you. I, no, it was an incredible experience, and, and now <clears> I... I I wouldn't say I've downgraded, but I just I have a more affordable car, and it. How feels, did how did how did that story go? It feels very fiscally responsible. You and I met in front of Whole Foods, and we had coffee, and and you were talking about getting it. You were you're really you know toying with the idea, and you wanted to get like a um, some kind know. of sort of German car. Yeah, you wanted like a black something. No, you didn't want a German car at the time. You wanted something different. I can't remember what, but it was like almost like a Camaro. Yeah, and I was like, Rich, no. <laughs> No. Good I job. Said, I said, y- you, you, when people see you, I said, people are right here looking at me and then looking at you going, wondering who you are. And the next thing, they're going to follow you to your car and see what you get in. And if they see you get in, in, into an element. One of my five Honda elements that right. I owned. And I, they're going to see you get into an element and go, oh. I said, but if they see you get into a Benz Audi or a Porsche, they're going to go, oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's what did it, right? You, you know, there's a lot of truth to that because back in LA, I had a used Corvette and I pulled up to a session. It was a Steve Perry session. Yeah. Larry London was playing drums. Nico Bolas was my buddy. He was engineering. Wow. I went in to help him out. 
they have cameras obviously in their parking lot and when i pulled in somebody on the session went excuse me is that your car are you driving that corvette and somebody went yeah he must be charging us a lot of money. <laughs> I never, I never forgot that. It's amazing. But it does send it's, a signal. And by the you way, know? the Corvette was like fifteen thousand dollars. Like it was a used eighty or eighty one Corvette. I, I had yeah. a conversation with a wealth manager friend of mine, and she told me because she was in the market for a car, and she was driving this beater station wagon. And she's a wealth manager. She handles some high end clients. And I'm going, what does that say to your clients when you pull up in that? I mean, well, what? it's like the personal trainer that charges you $120 an hour and they're out of shape. I'm not <laughs> paying anybody to train me that's out of shape. That's good, You got to walk the walk, you know? Yeah. You're but funny. That's good. Anyways, I split the difference. Um, and Signaling. I got a little Miata and it is yeah. cherry red and I love it. It's but fun. what's funny is you could drive an $80,000 truck it's to a session a and truck. nobody will say boo. Right, but if it's you're amazing pulling in your trucks. BMW convertible, yeah. it's like really. It, you're it, in the music business. <laughs> you're moving drums, and you drive a Beamer. I love it. And you're anyway dressed for success. The yeah. trucks, yeah, and it, just the notion that there are eighty thousand dollar trucks. Oh, absolutely, like, yeah. yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, what do you think? You know, we talk a lot of, and you know, about um, success and positivity, and you know, traits of successful people. What is the common thread that you've noticed? in working with the most successful elite drummers in the world and what did you notice from the, their their bosses or their the singers that's a great question i i've taken in quite a bit and my job i i always like to fly under the radar i mean i'm just there to provide setting up equipment but um the drummer one on one i've worked for a lot of different guys a lot of different personalities yeah um there is something to be said, though, and you could probably attest to this, both you guys, when you're around greatness. Mm -hmm. What it, does that mean? It rubs off. When I worked, and I didn't do extensive touring, but I did a tour with the Eagles, and I'm working around Fr Glenn Fry and Henley, and I'm sitting behind Don Henley. I'm his guy. Yeah. And I grew up listening to this guy on the radio, and I get I got goosebumps w listening to him sing and play. And by the way, he's never gotten enough credit as a drummer. Don Henley. Mm -hmm. Well, he plays perfect drum parts because he doesn't want to step on his own vocal. <laughs> so I tell drummers all the time, <laughs> oh. pretend you're singing the song, and that's the way you want to play the drum. Yeah, yeah yes. amazing. Yeah. But uh, to answer your question, you guys, um, man, a big part of it, is is really it's so basic and i guess maybe in any business you can't be a, an asshole you got to get along with people sure mm -hmm. be enthusiastic don't take yourself too seriously yeah <laughs> there's so many people that set up lighting equipment or play in a band yeah they're a side musician their name's not on the ticket yeah I believe you're speaking to a lot of the tenets of the Crash Book, now available on Amazon. See, and I haven't Thanks, even Jim. read it. Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, so. that's your copy right there. i got to sign it to you. Okay. Attitude. And John Michael got one. You know what, you guys? There's something. I grew up in a neighborhood where there were a lot of kids, and I had to fend for myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So <clears throat> you got to be tough, but you, you, you don't want to get stepped on, but you want to make friends along the way. Right. Mm -hmm. And if be a team player, like for what I do, you know, you can't be like, oh, I only do this. Don't ask me to help. Right. You know, there's so much that goes into it, but it's all really basic stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've answered your well, question. You I mean, you learned it quickly uh, by, yeah. by just jumping into the deep end of the pool and using that fear as a motivator and, yeah. and, and being and, enthusiastic. And being around, seeing Bruce Springsteen, you know, a bunch of, you know, for 12 years sing on four and, hours yeah and i've worked in the studio on a couple of records where it was real intimate it was his guitar tech and myself and would sit down and have meals together and he would tell great stories and i never went away going i'm his friend <laughs> like i never took it mm. oh i'm hanging out with this guy can i like, text you later <laughs> yeah. yeah like <laughs> yeah same thing with Keith Urban. Yeah. He'll come in. Hey, Harry. Hey, Keith. How you doing? That's it. Boom. Done. Yeah. Like, I, 
I'm not there to be anybody's friend. And right. You're not going to germ on them. No. And there's other people. I've seen it through the mm-hmm. years. It's like, oh God, really, you guys? Like, yeah. get out uh, of his face. Well, I mean, your, you're, you know, your your notoriety, your what you're known for, is going to speak for itself and precede you over time, anyway. And people are going to appreciate that. I mean, I get that what you're saying. I was in radio for since 1997 and working in Vegas, you realize these people that you come across, I mean, everybody who was everybody came through our building and you realize they put their pants on one leg at a time like the rest of them, except when they do it, they just make gold records. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, you could you could overthink it, you know. Thank you. I want to hit that. Oh, come on, the show is over. Check this out. This is our buddy. Well, that's no. the bomb. Where's uh, John? Shazam! There he is. Little Johnny Hull. Johnny yeah. Hull on the show. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I, I don't want to keep no, blah, blah, blah. I blah. mean, there's so much. To, I mean, the, the funny thing is, is that I really feel like th- your life in drums would make such an interesting memoir. Don't tell the the stories that'll, you know, yeah. the bad stories, but just the, the, the takeaways. Yeah, there's been really quite a bit. The positive and, takeaways. Yeah, and... There's there are a few days where I kind of think back of like I, I guess I'm you, you don't think about mortality until you're my age and yeah. then I start thinking boy I've done a lot of, I've been a re- I've been to a lot of places yeah. I don't even want to say I've done a lot that sounds like um, egotistical but I've been exposed to a lot yeah and it's been phenomenal it's some of it's a blur but um hopefully you took pictures and, and- yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, and, then, and some of these guys are your friends. I mean, the yeah. Maradas, um, you and Gadder, Rich, Rich Redman. That's yeah, right. yeah. You of know, course. Steve Gad, I, and that's another example. Like I've spent, you know, a fair amount of time with Steve when I worked for him because would go for coffee or go to dinner and stuff. But I don't bother him. Right. Like I miss him. I'd like to talk to him more, but I'm not like, hey, Steve, it's Harry. Yeah. How you do? like? I'll I'll run into him again, but I do want to say this: when I moved to Nashville and it was really difficult, I was working for Steve. With he was playing with Al Jarreau, and we were out to dinner one night in Paris, just sitting on a cap at, at a cafe. And he goes, "Hey, how are things in Nashville? Like, how's Jody doing, my yeah. wife?" And I was angry. I was just like, she didn't love it. I wanted her to go, oh, it's great here, honey. Like, everything's great. But it was was the complete opposite. And as I was getting agitated, Mm -hmm. telling him at dinner, I'll never forget this. He just looked across the table and he went, maybe she's just afraid you're not there. It was wisdom. Wow. It was just like simple, like, don't get angry at her. Like, you, you literally dropped your family off. And you're on the road, and here we are in Paris having dinner, and she's dealing with Kids. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's little things like that, yeah. you guys, that that I hold to my heart. But you know, at the same time, and it's it, my kids see me working a lot. You know, I've got yeah. three small kids. Uh, I would, ra- I always say, I would rather you see me working than playing video games. Or doing whatever and, and not spending time with you. You always make time for them. Right. You have to make time and, and everything. But I mean, it's my father worked. He busted his butt too. Yeah, mine, oh, mine God. too. You got you to gotta do it. That's our men, our roles as yeah. men. My know? dad was my mentor. <clears throat> I ha- I inherited his work ethic. I was never too proud. Like I'm sure you guys, you yeah. do what you have to do to survive. Yeah, hey, man. I, I always at an early age, it was like, I'm going to shovel snow. I'm going to cut. Yes. I'm going to rake leaves. I'm going to have mm-hmm. a paper route. Like I worked. You know, and yeah. my, you know, my dad was in the military and then he came ashore and he went, worked in a bakery all day and then went to school, night school for six night, six years to get his accounting degree. And then, you know, was an accountant in a huge company for 30 years. So, you know, hard work uh, will get you a life. Your, your, your relationship with your kids will play out one way or another. I mean, you look at the guy like Gary Vaynerchuk, his father was a Soviet era, you know, immigrant that came over here in the eighties or late seventies. And his father was just had that mindset, that immigrant mindset. I'm going to bust my butt. And they worked at a liquor store in New Jersey and came up through there. And his, you know, his family never saw him because he was there from, you know, six in the morning till 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. You know? I remember growing up, I asked my mom if she, her and my dad were separated because I never saw my dad. He yeah. had three jobs. Mm-hmm. Crazy, right? You got to yeah. do what you got to do. But anyway, 
here we are. It's wow. funny getting back to the story you said about you know having all the contacts and the people that you know uh, and not wanting to bother them. You know, Rich was one of the first people that I, of of high caliber note that I knew uh, on a personal level. You know, other the people that have, they're always been just kind of come in and they go out of, of your life and professionally. But Rich was the first one to come to the house and we did some video shoots there and everything. So for us, it was like, wow, that's kind of a big deal, you know? Yeah. Um, but it was, I get what you're saying, but every now and then I would, I would do stuff like, you know, send him a text. Hey, I'm thinking about you. Hope Aww. you're okay. Yeah. You know, He's uh, kind of been like my, like a spirit animal in my life, you know, because that's awesome. You know, if I, because, you know, even if the people that go teach or motivate other people, we need a shot of inspiration. We need, yeah, a, we need someone to, to keep to, us on track to, to have somebody come out and ask, even though you, 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 as long as there's nothing in it for you, that's a very them centric, be them centric is my big thing. And you send them a text that say, you know, I really want to know how are you? You know, who I learned that from was Glenn Schweitzer. He would ask, he would look you right in the eye and go, how are you? And he'd be wanting to know how you were. Glenn Spencer. Good or bad. Yeah, the graphic yeah. artist. Yeah, web design guy. Yeah, web video guy. Great. And, and it, was, it was amazing. Okay. And how much, you know, longevity that creates in, in relationships. Yeah. Like, I should do that with Tully. Based, you know, make sure that he knows I'm his friend. <laughs> I think you guys Hark, covered that last time. Harkening back to that episode. Yeah. Uh, you know, just send him a text. Be like, hey, man, mm-hmm. I'm thinking about you. I hope you're well. How are you? Did, there's did, a lot of there's a lot of power to that. Yeah. Did you find that 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 the lot, a lot of successful people reap the benefits in their career from hard work, or did it, did, did it land in their lap? It it, well, it happens sometimes. I think like anybody, we all catch a break. Yeah, or some people don't. Um, but I think for the most part, you got to make your own. I mean, I don't have to tell you. Yeah, you know, you're you're all about that. The guys that you know I've worked for and stuff, they're just great at what they do. Mm-hmm. It's no different than a quarterback or a running back or a hockey player that can score yeah. 60 goals. These guys, some of them have natural talent mm-hmm. where they don't have to work real hard at it. There are guys that don't practice. And I'm not saying that's what you should do, but Getting back to Rick Morata, he started playing when he was 19. Right. His friend was drafted. That's a late start. Late start. His friend was drafted in Vietnam and needed a place to store the drums. And Rick was in college and set him up and started playing one That's day. That's awesome. But never took a lesson. But even when he was working a lot, when I'd go to his house, there were no drums anywhere. There yeah. wasn't even a practice pad or sticks. Yeah. I'm not saying there's just certain people and there are other people that lock themselves in a room. I think Dave Weckl once said like he missed like his uh, some of his teenage years. Like sure. he just Friday and Saturday nights he was practicing. I definitely he, missed my teenage years. Yeah. Practicing. I did it then. Right. And then some people will be like, well, do you want to, you know, like just had Danny Gottlieb here yesterday. Right. And, and and what a, he's a lifelong student. He stood with Joe Morello for 40 years. I think to myself, wow, Ed, still so passionate about continually improving on the instrument. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, me personally, I want to make music with other people. Like the, Create. the thought of being in a, in a room by myself with the four walls closing in me on me drilling some sort of an exercise. Like I did so much of it, you right. know? Right. Yeah. Well, you got to put yourself out there for and, sure. And keep going after it, yeah. whatever, whatever it may be. I'm kind of like in a very good position right now. You can kind of live your teenage years now. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to just enjoy, be very thankful every day, and <laughs> right. and um, make the best of what I have. Yeah, and mm-hmm. getting back to the whole being away with the family, I had a battle with that. My daughter, I miss so much. Yeah, you know, ballet recitals, cheerleading, and I wasn't around a lot, but I provided a right. really nice life, and she knows that. Well, she knew it a few weeks ago when she got married. <laughs> she got but you married. got to remember, Harry, that down the road you're going to have you know grandchildren and things yeah. of that nature. So that's that's coming too. I keep hearing that's like uh, supposed to be an incredible. Yeah, because you get to play with them and hand them back. <laughs> <laughs> there's no Perfect. there's no hope for me having grandkids Rich uh, at this point. With grandchildren, there's hope oh for my you. God. Come on now, to having grandchildren. Yeah, you know. You oh can, my God, bud. You can do uh, what the foster care. <laughs> 
my God. You know what? We'll let you share in our grandchildren. How's that sound? Absolutely. Harry will too. I yeah, love, right. I, I celebrate playing with kids and teaching kids, and then I give them back to their parents. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. That's, That's right. Great. Actually, like like I said, John Holes, is, is, he is like a, he's like a son. And you know, it's really funny is that I think people want to be trusted, liked, and appreciated appreciation especially i want to be told hey great job on this or uh, goes a long way and so every sound check i thank john every night after the show i hug john i say thank you and then you know there's a guy on the side of the stage waiting with a flashlight going guys you can do this later right <laughs> like like i'm like you know follow the flashlight let's get out of here because then the local crew yeah. swarms the stage and then it becomes a hazard because these guys are taking things down they're right, pushing right. the cases they're like yeah. richie get out of here you're gonna see john in an hour but i just always say thank you because i know what it's like to not have him you know rich that's very cool of you because that does go a long way and, and you probably know what it's like to not be appreciated sure yeah. Yeah. Everybody wants to be mm-hmm. appreciated. I think. Yeah. Especially at their job. For sure. Mm-hmm. It does go a long way. I love it. Well, this is such an amazing conversation. You know what I say? I encourage you. We'll get you that co-author. I know ghost authors. I know co-authors. Really? I think you should start putting your ideas down. Okay. I, I mean, from all from all your life <laughs> lessons, and and you already have the cool pictures of you and Kenny, you and Steve, you and you know, yeah. you and me. I mean. Yeah. I mean. To sum it all up, you guys, before we sign out, if somebody told me uh, when I was a kid listening to records, no, there wasn't an iPod or a computer, hey. but my record collection, and I used to love to look at the names on the back of the records, yeah, mm-hmm. and then to end up working, you know, and and becoming friends with some of the guys, and it's been a, a hell of a run. I think you you brought that. You manifested that. You brought that into your life. You were staring at those names going, wow. And then it happened. Yeah. I manifested Rich into my life by watching Hicktown video when it came out. And I was like, (laughs) I could totally play that song better. I'm sure you can play it. (laughs) And then we met at Calypso Cafe. We did. Calypso. Yeah. Good place. Feeding uh, starving musicians for 25 years. Great place. That's That's a funny place. The same staff. God, they've been there for I since, didn't know that. Oh, wow. no. Uh, same people? Uh, it's the same people for 23 years. <laughs> I don't even know their names. How horrible is that? I've 15 ne- years I've been going I know. There. I feel bad. You need to fix <clears> that. <throat> we just got done talking about appreciating. I know, but I, know. I mean, but after 23 years, I don't want to be like, um, what's your name? <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah. yeah. That's really horrible. Maybe Calypso will sponsor the show. <laughs> so, so Harry, if people want to keep in touch with you or, uh, or buy your Let's business. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, Harry Mc, that, there was like a delay I know. like was, a five second delay <clears throat> what do we want shazam there so um is, what is it drum biz at aol drum biz at aol is yes, there a I, u on the drum no drm biz that's cute and i'm not giving up my aol you've got mail yeah. that is so cute <laughs> I take such abuse for that. At AOL. What's wrong with you? I mean, you could have drumbiz at gmail.com. I, well, r- your buddy John Hall got us drumpad nashville at gmail. Drumpad yeah. nashville at gmail. So if you're a teacher and you want to teach and use the facility or you want to go to that the website and check, it's drumparadise.com. Yes, right? check it out. And there's a page and Jim, on there. You need to come over and check out the facility. Yeah, absolutely. When you're in the neighborhood. For sure. And uh, they'll watch out on the website there for all the events coming in, cool educational events. Harry, thanks so much for stopping by today. Thanks for we having really me. really appreciate you, man. I appreciate it. Good Nashville to meet you, brother. appreciates you. Man. Uh, Jim, thank you so much for always doing this, man. You, I get a hug after the show. You are the greatest awesome. co-host and producer. Guys, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, tell your friends, send us an email, Show at gmail.com. Big thanks to our sponsor, BigLighting.com. Big, Big dot, dot lighting. lighting. Big dot lighting. LED com. lighting conversions. That's, that's right. Everyone's going to LED lighting. Guys, keep in touch. Thanks for tuning in. It's the Rich Redmond Show. We'll see you soon. This has been the Rich Redmond Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredmond.com forward slash podcasts.